It's episode four of the show. Malcolm, has the season been good so far? Well, show. I wrote that. Not going to deny it. Might as well go ahead and start the show. The best coverage of high school and college athletics in Northeast North Carolina begins now. This is NENC Sports Radio Show on WRVS 89.9. The third season, still going strong. The NENC Sports Radio Show, Owen Hassel, sports editor for the Daily Advance newspaper in Elizabeth City, North Carolina. Here with you, uh, Malcolm Shields, sports writer for the Daily Advance. Lots of changes in the football schedule. These past couple of weeks, are we going to get it together now? Is it going to everything be Friday and then Saturday for college? Or are we doing this? Hopefully so. Hopefully so. Okay. We'll dive into that much more throughout this episode. But for more on Northeastern North Carolina sports, follow us on Twitter. Also use the hashtag NENC Sports to keep the discussion rolling. You can follow us at NENC Sports. Then for me, I'm at Owen OBX. Malcolm? At Malcolm underscore Shields. Okay, and there's more ways to stay involved with sports in northeastern North Carolina in the form of a blog. Go to nencsports.wordpress.com for tidbits that aren't always in the daily advance, plus interviews and video from various northeastern North Carolina games. Speaking of games, uh, some Saturday, Monday, some not until next month now. Uh, A lot to process. And we'll do so after this. Like our Facebook page and give us your questions and comments. Find us at facebook.com slash NENC sports. Elizabeth City State University sails into Rocky Mount September 17th for the 19th annual Down East Viking Football Classic. The Mighty Vikings will battle the Tigers of Morehouse College. Kick off 4 p.m. at Rocky Mount Athletic Complex. Get tickets and more information online at ecsuvikings.com or contact the University Cashier Station at 252-335-3207. Hear the game live on WRVS 89.9. This is Edenton coach Paul Hoggard, and you're listening to NENC Sports Radio Show on WRBS 89.9. We don't talk anymore. We don't talk anymore. Wait, we do a lot of talking on this show. We don't talk We've, there's probably been stuff that's been cut out because we talk so much on this show. <laughs> uh, that's not a problem. It is a talk show. It's only songs I pick. <laughs> so that being said, we'd love to talk to you on the show. Uh, we tape episodes typically on Wednesday nights around 10 p.m. So we want you to feel free to call into the WRVS studio at 800-868-4491. Clay Mercer will get you through. Ask anything you want. We're an open book. We'll do what we can to, to answer questions or if you just want to make a statement. Some people will call in. I just want to say that that team ain't that good. I hang up now. And that's what happens. That's fine. Uh, like I said, ask anything you want. You know, like ask why Malcolm Pitt Curry took the beat Hickory by forty points. <laughs> I want. I mean, I want to know that. <laughs> Cannabis much? <laughs> no, but I was on that Curry took Kool Aid. <laughs> Curry took uh, red Kool Aid. I yes, guess cherry. Yes, yes. It would have to be that. Uh, I mean, like I said, I was like a foot on the Curry took train. Yeah, you took like a transatlantic <laughs> journey <laughs> on the Curry took train. Yeah. I guess my logic was, you know, it was a close game last year and they've been so impressive the first two weeks, you know, kind of thought that Romano would roll into it and just didn't, just didn't translate it um, on Monday. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was the Monday game. Actually, we had two Monday games. Uh, had a game Thursday as well. This tropical storm, Hermine. Uh, we can't even come up with any cool jokes that the t- name Hermine. Right. Who named somebody Hermine? This week's the first week I heard of that name before. Her mine? Yeah. <laughs> her two, her three? I don't know. That's that's an interesting name. Uh, last Thursday, Monday, had high school games. Edenton got ahead of the storm playing Thursday at Plymouth, won 42 to nothing. That was a, a blowout. I said running clock. Mm-hmm. That's what happened. Of course, the Plymouth clock was busted for the first half, so oh, I guess boy. it already ran off the field before the game started. Yeah. That's what happened there. Someone said, that's cruel, and don't say that. I said, I'll tweet it, and I did. <laughs> 42 nothing Edenton all over Plymouth, and of course the Aces are definitely looking strong so far. And Plymouth's struggling right now. Mm-hmm. That's all there is to it. 0-3, first time mm-hmm. since 1992. Mm-hmm. That, that's happened. <clears throat> Daniel Burleson, thanks for the heads up on that. He's 
knows a lot of things Plymouth wise. Been on the show a few times. Uh, once Plymouth gets in the Coastal Ten, I, I believe they'll uh, Coach Robert Cody and the and the gang will 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 be just fine. Mm-hmm. First flight beat Manio for a fourth straight year in that uh, annual Marlin Bowl. Uh, Pascal Tank strong second half to pull away from Brequemans. And then Gates on a last second field goal. Thirty nine yards, Caleb Brickhouse beat Bertie. Thirty nine yards. yards. That's that's pretty good in high school. One uh, A football. Yeah. Gates is a one A school. You probably know that if you've listened to the show before. Yeah. One A team, mm-hmm. you got a kicker like that. Yeah. I know a lot of two A and three A schools that like to have a kicker yeah. that can do that just under that type of pressure. Mm-hmm. I think the score seventeen sixteen. So mm-hmm. uh, that was the winner. Thirty nine yards. Wow. Uh, and and I have been big on Gates. Mm-hmm. I have been big on Gates ever since that Curry Tuck satellite camp when I saw uh, Coach Matt Biggie have a couple of his players there, and I thought looked really good. They held up in some drills with the vaunted Lake Taylor guys mm-hmm. of Virginia. Cry me a Lake Taylor, <laughs> uh, not Gates. No crying there. Did a great job at the satellite camp, getting noticed, and and right now, if there's a team, a not Plymouth team, to win the Coastal Ten. Mm-hmm. My nod right now is to Gates. Mm-hmm. What about yours? I would go with Gates, but you got to think right now the way it's kind of breaking down so far in the first three weeks. You got to put Perquimans up there. I mean, they they gave Pascal Tang a good fight for the first half, and when they get it together, they can be extremely competitive in that in that conference. And you don't want to forget Camden. We're not yeah. trying to forget Camden. It's just right now they're fighting through some injuries, uh, but you got to believe Coach Scott Jones and the Bruins are going to try to make some noise. Uh, later in the year when they when they get healthy. What's the most impressive showing so far? We got Pasqua Tank 3-0, and First Flight 2-0, and or Edenton 3-0? and I'm going to go with Edenton. Okay. Um, going to Southwest Edgecombe and winning the way they have, I mean, they've dominated all the ga- their games this year, and I think that's the most impressive thing, and they haven't really done it without you know throwing the football, which is probably the biggest thing, so... Who knows when they get in the conference player, maybe this week against Rocky Mount, maybe they'll throw it around a little bit. But I think as of right now, Edenton has just been impressive. Yeah, that's probably I think that's a relatively easy question to answer when you put it in that context. Uh, first flight has played Arcadia out of Virginia, the Eastern Shore area, and then and then Manio, uh, Pasquatank. They're supposed to win those games, right? Yeah. You're supposed to beat Camden. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to beat Gates. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to beat Brequimans doesn't mean they've done it all in a row right so let's give chris mcgee and those guys credit and and coach mcgee's the first to say it Mm -hmm. yes we're supposed to win those games i like the fact that they've fought hard in the second half to shake off some rust or whatever it is because that's what's happened against gates and brequimans they've had to fight a little harder than maybe expected Mm -hmm. but they've done that right Uh, i've seen pasqual tank teams and you have too Mm -hmm. that when they were down 21 18 against brequimans at halftime oh no they would have thought about that 2013 game that a few of the kids still remember that were freshmen, now seniors like Marcus and Michael Cow, who, who played varsity. They would have probably given up. And you didn't see that out of past. I didn't see any panic. Uh, last year when Camden scored on them first and Marcus Joyner moonwalked into the end zone, there was a lot of panic. Now that was Marcus Joyner, a kid who's hard to take down. I get that, but he's just one kid. But all of a sudden, the pass tank guys were looking at each other. Yeah, uh, it was. They were yelling with fans in the crowd. It was. It was a bad scene. Didn't see any of that uh, this past Monday against Brequimans. Came back on a roll. Twenty-two unanswered points. Marcus Cow, opening kickoff return. Boom. Wow. He's got that speed. He's got that speed. Uh, you could. Could you make the argument he's the fastest kid, fa- fastest back in in the region? He's right up there with uh, Kimon Bailey. I mean, when he when Bailey gets the ball, he's out the gate and gone. Uh, J.R. Walker, he's a little bit taller guy, a little long legged, so he's a little bit more smoother. So those will be the guys in terms of the fastest guys in the area. Uh, the most elusive of tacklers, of tackles, would probably be Cam Whitehurst of Curry Tuck. Yeah. Still talking yeah. about that play yeah. where he came back across, uh, looted one tackler twice, <laughs> couple blocks, boom. That's what happened. Uh, I saw a Camden player at the grocery store the other day, and I said, I'm sorry you've had to see that and how it's blown up. He said, no, it's cool. I've watched it like six times myself. <laughs> <laughs> and he was one of the guys I think that was trying to, of course, tackle 
Mr. Whitehurst. Good perspective. And yeah, he's, hey, it happened. We lost. <laughs> mm-hmm. We're moving on. Please bring on Columbia. Yeah. <laughs> please bring Columbia on. Yeah. Please give us the Wildcats. Yeah. <laughs> Wildcats, please. <laughs> Uh, speaking of Camden, Northeastern and Camden were supposed to play last Friday. Uh, decided to move that game not to Saturday or Monday, but to October 7th. You're saying, why October 7th and take all that time? Well, they both happen to have open dates that week. That's a rare thing to to see that and go, hey, we got this backup plan. And if you're Camden, you're thinking, you know, we don't have to play Northeastern. We're good. We can just forget it, right? Just um, won't you scrimmage your JV that night and, and have yourself a gate. Oh, man. Have yourself a good time. What am I saying that's so wrong here? What is, what is so wrong with this? That's a money game for both yeah, schools is what yeah. it comes down to. You just hope no one gets hurt. You hope yeah. you never want anyone to get hurt no matter the game. But Northeast, it's it's going to be that lopsided more times than not. Cannon does have a win in that series. Let me bring that up for Bruins fans who think I'm just poo-pooing here. Cannon has a win in the series against Northeastern. It's just not going to be a second one this year. <laughs> But uh, that'll be October 7th in Elizabeth City. Last week, we had Elizabeth City State football coach Ernest Wilson on the show. It was a great interview, good time with Coach. Uh, he was very confident in his abilities. He always is. Uh, <laughs> Malcolm, you were there. Vikings gave Norfolk State all it could handle and then some and maybe a few turnovers. The only difference in that 2012 game? Uh, yeah, in the second half, um. <clears throat> They they hit a big pass play to uh, James Rowe, and then as soon as he caught it, he fumbled, and that that ended up giving some momentum to Norfolk State. Ended up going down and getting a score, and you know the offense kind of got stagnant there in the, in the second half. Um, Jamon Oatman, pass team product, came in and ran a couple series, but they just couldn't get anything going offensively. Um, you got to think that without running backs Josh Joyner and Petey Boone there, that kind of hurt them to be a little bit more balanced because they were depending on Daquan to run the football. So. Um, if if you're Coach Wilson, you're probably pleased with how your team, um, you know, handling themselves in Week One against a one double A team that people would expect that you would lose to by a lot. Let me bring this up, and it's going back to his time at Savannah State, which I'm sure he doesn't want to keep bringing up. Savannah State in the MEAC, just like Norfolk State. He told us in that interview last week on the show, he believes his offense, the, the people he has, the personnel wise here, were better than. Savannah State last year. Is that correct? From what I remember, I believe that's correct. And so he struggled with Savannah State playing Norfolk State. But with ECSU, could have very well had a victory. Maybe I'm reading too much into that. And I'm he could spin it either way, and it still looks good for him. Mm -hmm. Uh, But maybe I'm really trying to get to the point, is Norfolk State really that bad, or is ECSU not as bad as we thought? This is it's kind of hard. Come on, Malcolm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one weekend is kind of hard, though, but um, you got to think, um, you got to look at Norfolk State, and this is a team that's, you know, I think was picked, you know, to be fairly competitive in the MEAC, and they, you know, they had their struggles against ECSU. So, as of right now, you got to kind of say, you know, maybe it's a little bit more of Norfolk State. Yeah. It's obvious ECSU is going to get a tougher test. Yeah. Should get a tougher test Saturday in the Bronx against Fordham. That's a top 25 FCS program. Yeah, they went to the playoffs last year. And I realized got dropped pretty hard by Navy, but it's Navy. Navy's still pretty good. I don't think there's any – you're not too hurt over that, especially knowing that, hey, we got Elizabeth City State on the schedule. And the next question from a lot of the players is probably where is Elizabeth City State? But it's a money game. Mm-hmm. Another money game. Uh, ECSU got forty grand from Norfolk State to play. And then – 20, 25. 25 they'll get from Fordham to drive up there mm-hmm. and uh, get a meal yep. and a cookie. A cookie and a bottled water. Cookie and bottled water for each person. So we, we, make, we make jokes. However, when you have a contract, you need to be very specific, and that's what the contract is. And uh, Good job with that. But it didn't specify like macadamia nut <laughs> or chocolate. Yep. Or if it's oatmeal raisin, that's just messed up. <laughs> like you need to give them another thousand dollars instead. That should have been part of the contract. Yeah. Like uh twenty five thousand oatmeal raisin cookie. <laughs> twenty thousand chocolate chip cookie. Mm-hmm. I might I might so I might sacrifice five grand for that chocolate chip cookie. Yeah. 
We got we got to have priorities here. Yeah, love me some macadamia. That's you do. Yeah, it's not bad. Not bad. Hey. <laughs> Come on, me strong with the macadamia then. <laughs> All right, we're gonna have this debate right now yeah. on the sports show. Yeah, macadamia or chocolate chip? Yeah, especially when the macadamia is not completely cooked. It's kind of like half cooked, nice and soft in the middle. Yeah, we haven't dang on conversation about cookies. <laughs> he wants to. No one can substitute the chocolate chip cookie. You can't. You can't do that. You know what? We probably need someone to break the tie on that. <sighs> Maybe we do. I mean, and it's true. And we're not just talking about cookies. I want to get some more clarification on things that Wilson said he wants coach Peyton Manning and said he was an intern coach. We had actually a few listeners. Malcolm got up with me during the weekend to look up the claim. And it's true. Uh, but it was for like a mini camp that was only maybe a few weeks long. And he was in charge of running backs and, you can look that up on the Hampton website. That's where I found that part when, when Wilson was a coordinator at Hampton. It is a little stretching. It's there, but is, is it really there? So that's why we need clarification. And there's only one place to get it. And I'm glad he's giving of his time again. In this case, he has to do it over the phone. He's getting ready for Fordham. Coach Ernest Wilson, glad you're here to, to keep us straight, Coach. Hey, good evening, Owen and uh, Malcolm. How are y'all doing tonight? Doing good, doing good. Coach, I want to know about this Peyton Manning thing. What what is I, I didn't I didn't get you a good follow up question on that was was my problem. That that was on me. Okay. I'm gonna clarify something real quick. Yeah. Um, just for the record, I really do like oatmeal raisin cookies. I think they're delicious. And as a matter of fact, I think um in my contract when we go to Fordham this week, um I'm not getting any cookies. I'm supposed to be getting some Junior's uh, cheesecake. So I just want to go ahead and clarify that, that we, we actually talked about this contract very, very uh, in detail before we signed it. So I'm, me and my coaching staff, we're going to get some cheesecake. We're going all the way to New York City. We're going to get ourselves some cheesecake. Oatmeal raisin? I mean. I like that. There's nothing wrong with oatmeal raisin cookies, Owen. You should know this. No. What what makes an oatmeal raisin cookie so much better than a chocolate chip cookie? I, I don't know. I mean, I I think chocolate chip can get boring sometimes. And plus, you know, oatmeal raisin makes you think of home. So, you know, I don't know. It's just a comfort thing. I like oatmeal raisin. Uh, but but I think we're getting off topic here. We need to get back to the Norfolk State game now because Coach Wilson, uh, to hang with Norfolk State, an FCS program, your Division Two. We just mentioned it here a few minutes ago. You couldn't do that with Savannah State. What makes ECSU so special? These young men be playing hard, and, and they, they come to work every day, and they believe that they can win. And so we just want to get up there and, and prove that we could we could hang with the big boys. And I think that we did that. I know we came up a little short, but, uh, you know, we got a long drive to New York this, this Saturday, and uh, I don't think any weather is going to be an issue. I mean, it's not cold. I know New York gets cold, but I, I, I'm just looking forward to playing Fordham right now. Now, you've mentioned Fordham, but I've heard you also talk about Peyton Manning's forehead. How how big is that forehead? You've been up close to it. i I, I got to be honest with you. It is um, it is significantly large. Um, it's, it's probably larger than normal, but he's very sensitive about that, and I would not talk about his forehead around him if I were you. Yeah, I mean... I- <laughs> Probably works for me because I'll probably never be around him. But uh, I will keep that in mind. And Malcolm, you have something. Yeah, um, I just got to ask you about it um, after the game. You know, I saw you on the sideline with the with the shirt and the tie. You know, what's the inspiration for that? The bottom line is that you got to be a professional at everything you do. You know, it doesn't matter if you're going to a football game, you know, on the sideline. You want to make sure you're looking sharp. It doesn't matter if you're going to the movies and get some popcorn. You know, you go into the food line and get some cheesecake. You got to look professional. And, you know, we try to, you know, build a program here. And, and so, you know, you wear that shirt and tie everywhere that you go. And it, it just looks sharp. And it sends the right message. Coach, I'm, I'm just so glad you're with us to, to clarify. Coach, thanks for ha- being on the show. Always a pleasure, gentlemen. Y'all take care now. Okay. We'll be right back with a little Shimon now. 
Discover graduate education at Elizabeth City State University. ECSU currently offers four graduate degree programs, elementary education, biological sciences, school administration, and mathematics. To learn more, contact the Office of Graduate Education at 252-335-3947 or online at ecsu.edu. I don't think we're done with this debate. I don't know why it's a debate because it's chocolate chip cookies. I'm just macadamia nut. Uh, agree to disagree. Okay. <laughs> Never heard anyone say macadamia nut above chocolate chip cookie. Never. <laughs> Never. I mean, give me just sugar cookie. Snickerdoodle? Sugar cookie. I don't know. Something about that cinnamon is pretty good. I was going as plain as plain can be. He's still got to find a little, <laughs> little taste to it. Guess I can't blame you for that. Ah. Uh. Well, we all know that Shamal now will not be about cookies. Shamal, Shamal, get on me, all right. There are some high stakes this week for NENC football. Northeastern goes to Wilson Hunt. Edenton hosts Rocky Mount. Both uh, lost to those 3As last season. There was not any shame in falling to an eventual 3A state champ in the Griffons, which is what Edenton did. And a perennial 3A title contender in Hunt. No shame in that. Uh, Eagles and Aces, make your impact known this Friday because more of the state is watching. Win or lose, earn the respect. There are still people in our urban areas who must look up where you're located or they're just too lazy to do homework about the merits of your programs. As a matter of fact, Tom Warner Cable's Mike Solarte brought up the northeast corner in his excitement for a trophy of a Marlin given to the winner of first flight Manio football. And then he said, now we take you to Kitty Hawk. Oh, boy. First flight's in Kid Oval Hills, of course. And this year's game was in Manio. Nothing to do with Kitty Hawk. The obligatory teams aren't good up there line might as well have been used when one publication called it a, oh, it's a trendy pick to take Northern Nash against Northeastern, a team the Eagles have smashed the past three years. And to Nash's credit, nearly did knock off Northeastern. Until the Eagles, of course, came back and won. That doesn't make it any easier to throw that chip off your shoulder. This Friday, a good chance for both Northeastern and Edenton, state ranked in two way, by the way, from the Associated Press. Good chance to prove why they're top ten worthy and score some wins. As for those people in larger cities, take a look at why athletes live here. Jump on now. Jump on. Jump on. Volleyball hitting its stride in the NENC, and the team to beat again is Curry Tuck. Yes, the Lady Knights. They could beat both area colleges, Malcolm, and Elizabeth City State and Mac U. Uh, here's more from uh, the team uh, from Curry Tuck coach Jennifer Hopkins. How do you think the team has performed? So you're you have, some teams have had a few more matches than you have. Um, they have. We did have a scrimmage um, before anything started at Hickory. Um, that gave us a pretty good idea of where we were playing a little. A 5A team obviously helped um, to see our weaknesses. Um, we're starting to come together now. Um, it took a few, you know, a few games um, to start to gel again, um, and we're working on the back row, and that's improved a lot. So we're really starting to we're starting to hit our stride a little bit. Something I was going to ask about the back row without Raven. Uh, that, she was such a such Raven a loss was a, for you. that that's a player that you, it's hard to replace. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've got a lot of girls that are really working hard in practice, um, stepping up to um, make up for that spot. So um, they've really improved a lot. How do you keep the girls motivated in a match like this? It's gonna be a lot of free balls. It's gonna be difficult in a way to run your offense. Right. Um, I just tell, you know we got to stay focused. You play your game every time, and that's how we have to stay. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what do you grade your team in a match like this to when, you know, going into it, you're probably going to win and, and win if, relatively easy? If they can play, if they can stay focused, um, work, make sure the passes come up to the target. Um, we don't make any silly mistakes, um, letting balls drop where we're just kind of looking at each other. Mental errors is what I'm really looking for to make sure they stay mentally strong. Was it hard for them to do that in that second set? When you win the first set 25-2, 
Right. Um, it is, and we kind of mixed um, things up quite a bit um, that second set, but they responded very well, and they stayed together and played very well. You know about Madeline Duncan and Cameron Johnson, Jesse Wilson. Who are some other players that, that you're seeing that are showing a lot of promise as well? Um, Jordan Reynolds. Kaylee Schuster um, is now just not playing middle. She plays back row for me. Jordan's a great backside hitter. She can play outside. She can play back row. Um, Lauren Gurney has really stepped up and is, and is a force in that middle. So, uh, Not looking too far ahead, but Northeastern looking a lot better this year. Not that they were bad last year, but uh, Mari Carver definitely has improved in the middle. Everyone knows about Macy Keaton. How, how big a game is that going to be? Um, it's always a big game. Mm-hmm. Any time that we play Northeastern any year, it's always been a big game. Um, we've got one game next week, so our practices, um, we've got Northeastern and First Flight, so our practices is going to be focused on playing Northeastern. You know, we're going to work on, you know, working. They've got big middles, so we've got to work on how to adjust to play in big middles. And you don't get to do much blocking practice here in these matches, do you? You, you kind uh, of just, yeah, no, what we, do you do? We, um, you know, we do a lot in practice. All right. <laughs> um, so we do a lot of blocking drills in practice um, to cover those and to recover off the blocks. Not to be outdone was yet another Perquimans Camden Volleyball Classic on Tuesday. After the Lady Bruins won the rivals' first meeting of the year in five grueling sets, middle hitter Bianca Berry explained how the team headed off the Lady Pirates' near-epic comeback. Did you really think it would end in three sets against Perquimans, the way these two teams have gone at it so many times? Well, after the first two sets, I felt like we had a good momentum to it. So I thought that maybe we could do it in three, but I was getting skeptical <laughs> towards the end. Mm-hmm. What but. changed in that third set? Uh, did the Bequims get a little scrappier, getting the loose balls better? You, you lost some focus? Or? Yeah, I think we just lost a little bit of momentum, really, was all it was. But we got it back, thankfully. <laughs> mm-hmm. What's going through your mind when volleyball can be a momentum changer in a hurry? All of a sudden, the third set for Bequims. Bequims in the fourth set. Yeah. Um, I was just like, wow, because <laughs> a lot of the points that they had were errors that we made. Like, our errors continued to grow. But, um, I don't know, it's just it's hard to sit on the bench and watch your team make those mistakes that we go over in practice. Did you notice Brookwomen's making some of those same errors the first two sets? Yes, yes. We were putting them where they weren't getting it. You've been in this game a few times. So rank this one, five sets and, and the comeback like you did in the fifth to win. I feel like this was definitely one of the more competitive ones. The crowd was definitely super big tonight, but I feel like it was one of our better games against them. What makes it such a, a hot robbery? What, what makes these teams – I think there's some mutual respect, but sometimes it can be a little – I don't know. I feel like we're on the same level in our conference, so it's just something like who can be better at that point in time. It's just more of a number one, number two sort of thing every year. How much have, has the team progressed since uh, the first match against Northeastern where it looked like the back row was a, a work in progress? We lost a lot last year, so we were definitely working on some kinks and stuff that we weren't figuring out yet, but I really think that we've come a long way since that first point we all played together because a lot of us haven't played together before. So for us to really pull together and beat them tonight was really awesome. Of course, you play each other again. It's going to be in Hertford. They've had boats coming out before, running (laughs) out in the crowd. What do you expect? Anything, everything, what? I expect nothing but greatness from them. They always bring it and make us bring our best to them. So I feel like it's going to be another really competitive game. You and uh, Maddie Lindstrom were able to block Casey Copley pretty well those first couple sets, but she started getting around you, started going right through your block. What? How did that change? I feel like we were just misreading it a lot more so. She was changing it up a lot more in the third and fourth sets, but I don't know. I feel like we got her towards the end. How important is it to have this rivalry when really the rest of the conference, I mean, put it like it is, is, is a level below? The, this game is definitely the highlight of our season, the home game and the away game for us. Those are the two games that we look forward to every single year. It's always talking about this game. What did you say in the huddle those last couple points when you're 13-11, 14-11, you're one point away? I was like, you guys have got to give it your all, dig deep and pull this out because I know you guys want it. I was like, I want it, so let's do it. NENC Twitter shouts on the way when we return.
Are you going to the big game? Snap pictures and post them to Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram with hashtag NENC Sports. WRVS 89.9 knows sports. Hear the best coverage of local high school and college athletics with NENC Sports Radio Show, Thursdays at 7 p.m. It's high school athletics back again. Yes. We're going to be with you every step of the way. That's all I'm saying. From the press box to press row brings HBCU and pro sports to your radio Saturdays at noon. We're going to talk with some of the top HBCU players and some of the top college players in the country. From the field to the court, get Get your your sports sports here here. on WRVS 89.9, your community voice. This is Coach Spencer from the Columbia Wildcats, and you're listening to NENC Sports Radio Show on WRVS 89.9. A little bit of Monica in my life, a little bit of Erica by my side. Malcolm, you look like Lou Bega. Or like mid-90s Lou Bega, because that's all I remember from him. (laughs) We don't know what Lou Bega looks like now. Back on the NENC Sports Radio Show, Owen Hassel, Malcolm Shields here. Been a very fun show. Letting loose. Trying to have a good time. And let's get to some Twitter shouts. Let's have some more fun. Your tweets go here. Twitter shouts. This is from at Nutrition Pair. I believe this is the parents of Pascal Tank uh, quarterback Jonathan Lambertson. Tweeted out a photo of the Virginia football scoreboard with ECSU on it. They were on there with other state scores that Virginia was highlighting. They said, shout out to ECSU Vikings on the board at UVA. Good luck, Vikings. Obviously, they were at the Virginia game when, who? We talked about FCS with Fordham. Uh, Richmond took it it to uh, Virginia. It's going to be a a tough, tough job for Bronco Mendenhall. Yeah. To fix the Cavaliers. Yeah, you got to think if he can do it, um, he's coming from a school that's kind of strict in BYU and Virginia's kind of strict with their academics. You can kind of think he can, he can kind of put it together. I see what you did there. Yeah. It's, it's going to take more than year one. Mm-hmm. I take year three. Yeah. You just don't. No one just goes into Scott Stadium and picks up a victory against the Cavaliers. No one except a lot of teams lately oh. <laughs> in the Scott Stadium and pick up a win against the Cavaliers. I would not be the first person to say that. I, I know friends who are UVA fans that would say, yeah, yeah. Anyhow, we encourage all of you to tweet about any NC sports. Yours might get put on the air. Just post your thoughts or questions. We'll try to answer them. Use the hashtag NENC Sports. Prediction time. NENC Picks of the Week. Oh boy. Oh boy. We're going to start with a couple, I think, easy ones. So we can move right along. Columbia at Camden. Brandon Underwood will be back for the Bruins. That is good, 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 good. And then good news for Camden, Coach Scott Jones. They needed that last week as a bye week, actually. It worked. It, it's a blessing in disguise, really, for Camden to have that time to heal. And Brandon Underwood's got the cast off. Heard it's a little tender, which is going to be the case first day or two, but I would think by Friday he'll be fine. Might not have to use him too much, but that's even better. He can gradually get back into the offense. I think J.R. Williams will probably still have the nod as a starting quarterback, at least at the beginning, and see what Underwood can do. So we got Camden in this one. Malcolm. Um, you know, speaking about basically they had an off week this week. This probably gives JR a little bit more time to get a little bit better feel of the offense. And uh, I'm going to go with Camden. Cresswell at Berquimmons. Malcolm says he wants to see Cresswell play. <laughs> oh, and I got to see Cresswell play. Just, just say five minutes. Oh, game. <laughs> you can't just say for five. You can't just walk into Cresswell Stadium <laughs> and say you're going to watch him for five minutes. <laughs> In this case, Cresswell's at Bequimmons, though. I am, I am at almost as high on Bequimmons as Gates. Mm-hmm. Because you like to think if there's going to be a year, yeah. of course, it's the last year of the Coastal 10 before mm-hmm. realignment, and you got Edenton and, and Plymouth going to be beating each other up mm-hmm. in what's going to be called the new Album All Conference. Last year of the Coastal 10, if there's going to be a year, it has to be this year, that Plymouth could be beaten in the conference has not happened. If there's two teams that can do it, we've said Gates, we've mentioned Brookwomen's, and maybe even Camden. Those would be the only ones. Yeah. So if we're going to mention Brookwomen's 
in that area, that realm, then we got to go ahead and pick Clemens to beat Cresswell. Yeah. Right? Yes. <laughs> One way for Clemens. I learned my lesson last year. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. And that's another reason why I guess you want to see Cresswell so badly, because you <laughs> picked Cresswell to beat for Clemens <laughs> last year. He set himself up, people. Yep. He set himself up yep. to get played. Like what DJ Khalid said, congratulations, you played yourself. Yes. You played yourself. Big time. Right Big there. Time. <laughs> happens to the best of us, kid. Yep. It really does. Yep. It happens. Uh, Berquemans for me, Berquemans for you. Everybody loving some Berquemans. Yes. Dallas Hall, Dewan Williams. I like what I saw out of them, at least in the first half against Pascal Tank. And I like what I saw of them at times in the second half. They could have easily folded mm-hmm. when Marcus Cowell and company started really getting going. But Dallas Hall cuts a corner, runs 72 yards for a touchdown. All of a sudden, it's an 11-point game mm-hmm. in the fourth quarter. Plenty of time. Uh, now, to Pasquale Taint's credit, what it did was they ran off a lot of clock on each set offensive play. You could even see Avion James, quarterback at Pasquale Taint, the starting quarterback at Pasquale Taint, looking towards the referee when he's hearing the ref go 8-7, and they're holding. and that helped them with a long scoring drive. Pretty well put it in the books, but uh, Bequemans didn't didn't give up there when it would have been easy to do so. Mm. so good for them, and now they're in conference play and could be a player. Uh, Northwest Halifax at Manio. Gosh, I like Eddie Twine so much. He's a great coach, a great guy, and I keep saying that every week because I but. feel like I have to overlook the, the word but that's coming into play, but... Uh, it's just, there's just, it, it's difficult right now. And Manny has got, I think, a few of their own, its own injuries. And that's not helping matters. Just got beat up by first flight. Played at Jacksonville. Uh, bless him. Yeah. You know, go to play Jacksonville as well. Uh, and then Curry took a course, put a, put a hurting on the Redskins. Now you got Northwest Halifax. I admit I don't know much about Northwest Halifax. I would like to think, other than Columbia, Crestville, Madame Mesquite. I don't think Hatterson's on the schedule uh, for for Manny. I should have looked more into that. But if that was on the schedule, other than those games, this would be their other best chance to win. I'm going to give it to Manny. I just, I'm, I'm going with heart. Mm-hmm. I'm going with a lot, a lot of heart. Heart. Mm, I'm going with heart for the guys from Rono Collins. Manio. I'm going to go with Northwest Halifax. See, you got to do all that stat looking up and finding all these <laughs> facts, throwing in my face. And sometimes you just got to go with heart. Sometimes you got to go with chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> sometimes you go with macadamia nut. That just makes you a nut. Man Mesquite at Kit Pride. Here's an interesting, this is a fun fact. Man Mesquite 2 0. Columbia. Nevertheless, two and zero for the boys in Hyde County. Got the Lakers. I'm sure they're excited. They're excited there in Hyde County, a Swan Quarter, if you will, going to play Kit Pry. Kit Pry three and zero. Got two undefeated teams here. Mm. Kit Pry will remain undefeated. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> I'm going to give a love of love to the Lakers. I'm going to go with Madam Steve. Oh, oh, now we have heart. Now we want to give out some heart. Now we want to be, look at me. Now I want to give out some heart. What What was that? What was that? <laughs> Manio needs that. You're taking some of the love from Manio. You're trying to take some of that heart, and you move it. Madam Mesquite's got two wins. Madam Mesquite, Manio doesn't have a win, and you're going to sit there and do that to the Redskins. Are you kidding me? <laughs> The guys, they had the Marlin hanging up before the game. Someone stole the Marlin yeah. on top of that. Man. First Flight wins a Marlin that they had to bring in at the last minute, which is just totally messed up. Mm-hmm. Hey, people, that's just don't bring the Marlin back. Uh, so, all right, fine. You pick my mesquite. Rocky Mounted Eatons, and now we're getting to the good stuff. Oh, uh, last year, this was, I, I don't think, if you're Paul Hogger, do you even look at the film from last year? Do you burn that? I don't know what you can pull out of it because some of those key guys aren't even back. This is a completely, mm. in some sense, it's a completely different team. Yeah. It, both both teams are meaning. Rocky Mountain and Edenton, yes. Mm. This is at Edenton. That's good. 
uh, should be a pretty good gate for him. Rocky Mountain, I'm, I, I would think, will travel well. Not too far of a trip for Rocky Mount to make. <laughs> we bring out the heart again. <laughs> One more time. Just, I don't know if Edenton is quite. I don't know if they're over the hump yet to beat a team like Rocky Mount, a 3A school. It's not going to be a running clock Friday. I'm going to tell you that much. It's not going to be anything like last year. I th- can we agree on that? Can we agree? Yeah, we haven't yeah. agreed on anything tonight. Yeah, I don't, so I don't think let's uh, think a it, couple of these games. I don't think it's going to be a seventy spot in that game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What it, was it seventy? It was, it was a lot. Yeah, I think it was. It was. It was running clock. It was not a good time. Uh, and then sometimes you have to go through the bad times to get to the good. Maybe this is that good time. I mean, what amazing turnaround it would be yeah. to knock off Rocky Mount after that. I just don't know if the Aces are quite there yet. But I think one thing that you can kind of say that's to their benefit, they're pretty much particular, they're pretty much healthy. Right. Um, I don't think Luke has been beat up that much or ran that much, maybe less than 20 times this year. So I mean, Haven't had to. Yeah. Especially probably ever since the second half at Southwest Edgecombe when they started putting on it. And you just don't go into Southwest Edgecombe and come out with a, what, a 46 to 13 win. You just don't go to Pine Tops and come out on top. But the Aces did however i'm going to give rocky mount the edge a 10 point game yeah i'm I'm gonna go with rocky mount okay curry tuck at first flight boy the knights need this it's first flight isaiah mccarraher said it uh, to you in the story Mm -hmm. Uh, we are always pumped up for first flight and they are there's been one year first flight came up to curry tuck they were late because there was an accident on the bridge so you're thinking, all right, they're going to be late. Not first flight's fault, but they show up late. They'll get here and they'll try to get dressed real quick and get started. We're all understanding of this. First flight comes out uh, after getting dressed, runs on the Curry Tuck sideline, starts taunting the Curry Tuck student. Oh, wow. Club. Yeah. Wow. Like, don't do that. That That is not necessary. That's just already going to make a, a, a potent, a powder keg. Absolutely explode. Fortunately, no students ran on the field and showed them what they thought of. But it's like, man, you're already late. What is this? All right, yeah, we got it. You had the names in the back of your jerseys. We get it. But that was a little much. I'm going back a couple years. Now it's Curry Tuck first flight this year. They play each other twice. This is a non-conference game. The next one's conference. I really believe Curry Tuck's going to put away that hit. They're going to burn the hickory tape. Yeah. Uh, now they, they played at Virginia Beach Sportsplex. Sounded like they needed to because they didn't want to mess up their own field. It was still pretty wet. Put a lot of money into that field before the season. Turns out with that, the money they might have lost having to repair the field. Todd Parker, pretty sharp cat. He was an AD at a pretty large school with Oscar Smith in Virginia. He, it seems like he knows what, what to do. I shouldn't say seemed he does. He weighed the positives and negatives, and it turned out I think in the end to be a positive other than that 35 nothing loss. Uh, Coach John Wheeler has told me, oh, and we still needed that game. We still needed to play Hickory. That has it's humbled us. We know we now really know what we need to work on. It's it's a lot tougher to find what you need to tweak when you when you outscore your first two opponents 89 to 2. What what do you what do you do there? Yeah. Guys, I really don't like the way you ran that jet sweep. I think next time you can get 70 yards out of it instead of 65. I mean, what else do you do? Uh, now you can show kids, eh, you're not the biggest dog mm-hmm. right now, but you get to be back in North Carolina. Fun fact, Curry Tuck still has held North Carolina team scoreless on defense. There you go. <laughs> you're getting it. You're getting it. <laughs> I'm going with Curry Tuck after I said all that. Yeah, I think uh... – like you said, but I'm curious saying, hey, this is a big game. We're not going to, you know, we don't need much to, you know, get us ready for this one. Um, with a short week, I think the kids, kids will lock back in and uh, pick up a big win. Northeastern at Wilson Hunt. Oh, yeah. This is a game Northeastern let slip. Yeah. Last year. I think a lot of three or four turnovers, I believe. A, a little Kinston like at the end of the season, how, mm-hmm. how some of this turned out. You were at both games, so I'm kind of speaking out of turn. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, it, you're you're saying the turnovers, yeah, and special teams, special teams that yeah, were not that, so special. Yeah, came back in the bottom of both games. Um, 
you got to think, you know, with the basically essentially a week off this week without playing Camden, um, that the kids are going to be a little bit focused. They, a lot of guys on that team who were there this year were on there last year. They know how that game kind of ended. Their mistakes kind of hurt them. I think uh, Northeast is going to go down and get a pretty big win against the 3A school. Northeastern's gone to Wilson Hunt and beaten Wilson Hunt before. Held them scoreless back in 2014. That was a pretty good Northeastern team in 2014. This is a pretty decent team in 2016 for Northeastern. A younger team in some spots, especially some skill positions. But no, nonetheless, another talented bunch of Eagles that Antonio Moore has. They'll win 10 games again this year. Or that would be, by my calculation, seven years, seven straight years of 10 or more wins each year. Not bad. Pretty impressive. I don't care where you are, this whole uh, the area that you play, nobody. No, Northeastern's gone out and played teams because after this week, it's cry me Lake Taylor. Yep. So they've gone out and played some talent. Northern Nash is better. Uh, and Plymouth, obviously, down this year, but still a defending 1A state champion, something to say for that. I'm going to give it to Northeastern, too. I, I've, I was leaning towards Wilson Hunt. Wilson Hunt's got a new coach. They're still learning. Uh, and, and really, it seemed like Hertford County hung in. Mm-hmm. with the Warriors. I don't know if that means anything for this week, but I I, I would like to think Northeastern, a little more discipline maybe, uh, they get the win. ECSU at Fordham. This is why we don't have Coach Wilson on the show right now, because we don't want him to hear what we have. He's, he, he might get upset if we we pick Fordham, because I'm picking Fordham. Why why, why should I pick ECSU? If you, if you wanted to, I guess, um, if the defense the defense played a little bit better than is expected, and I think um, Daquan, he's he's when he's right, he can move the football down the field. And what about our, what are these local guys? Jamon Oatman from Pasco Tank mm-hmm. getting in some reps at quarterback, doing pretty well. Noah Tuttle from Camden mm-hmm. coming in and doing well. This is that does my heart well. We're right back to the heart thing again. Yeah. And that 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 makes me happy. Good to see a kid like Tuttle. You know, I think last year he spent a lot of his time on special teams, and now starting in the secondary. So he has worked his tail off, really has. And and a yes sir, no sir kid. Mm-hmm. I say kid, he's now what twenty. Young man, young man has put in work, and we're glad to see Noah Tuttle. He's, he's paying off with the Vikings, but Fordham is a ranked FCS opponent. This is this is going to be a much tougher foe than Norfolk State. It should be. And you cut the check, you cut the cake, whatever you want to call it, and you get back hopefully in one piece. So Fordham. Go with Fordham. Not that I didn't already say that like three times. High school update. Uh, Curry Tuck at Camden Soccer. That's Thursday. First, the Knights lost at Manio 4-2 to two on Tuesday. Keegan Beasley with three goals. Uh, Edenton took care of Gates, Gates twice. As many days, Edenton beat Gates on Wednesday. Am I right on that? Oh, I know Edenton beat Gates eight to five on Tuesday. We haven't got the result of that. We tape on Wednesday night. <laughs> <laughs> what else am I going to say? We'll cut that part. We probably won't cut that part. Girls tennis. Curry took cut off Northeastern six to three with wins by Sarah Dover, Juliana Chalk, Heather, Heather Hennessy, Brittany Bikert, and Hannah Holden. Edenton beat Pasquale Tank 9 0. A lot of Perquimans Cannon volleyball talk when those rivals play. You just heard from Bianca Berry. Uh, Northeastern Curry Tuck, though, that's going to be a good one uh, coming up. Northeastern has looked a lot better this year. Uh, Macy Keaton, Kelsey Pierce, Taylor Jones. I think that that could be good. I think it'll. I'm going to give it to Curry Tuck, but I, I think it was four, maybe five. I think that's definitely possible. Uh, Lady Eagles also undefeated in the Northeastern Coastal. They beat Pasquale Tank in three, so both teams are going to probably come in undefeated for that matchup in the conference. Uh, of course, Burtuck's undefeated overall. Uh, but Quimmins Cannon Volleyball, i got to mention this real quick because these teams once again just set the house on fire. Uh, you, you get It's worth the price of admission to see these two play every year. Quimmins Cannon don't change. Stay the same. I mean, Camden wins the first two sets. I'm like, something's got to change. 
it ain't going down like this. It has happened. There's been sweeps a couple of times, but even in the sweeps, they've been very contested sets, like 25, 22. But those first two sets were not. It was all Camden. Brooke Women's was just discombobulated. Not getting on the floor for shots like you normally see of a Christy Thatch coach team. And that third set, it was about, Coach Summer Sawyer Camden said about eight to six. Camden was up and something just ended to change. Uh, Casey Copley with a couple of kills. And then Samantha Midget goes up to serve, and she just starts reeling it off. All of a sudden, she has served 11 straight points. Obviously, they weren't all aces or anything. I mean, women's had to fight to, to win each point, but 11 in a row. Wow, what a game changer that is. 16 to 3 spurt, win the third set, fourth set, kept it going. Now you're in the fifth set. Camden goes up 4 0. Women's gets four points. Oh, God, you cannot put this team away. Yeah. This is what I'm talking about. I had the snaps on there. If you want to go get me on Snapchat, it's N E N C O N. I know they're off now because they only stay on for 24 hours. Malcolm, you got Snapchat? No, no, I don't. <laughs> <They> kill me. <laughs> it's pretty bad when Malcolm. I better. I barely have Twitter on this phone. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad when Malcolm doesn't have the doesn't have certain apps. I got a BlackBerry and I got Snapchat. <laughs> okay, that's what I got. Somebody give Windows Phone some love. Come on now, update those apps. Yeah, that's my Shimon now. Yeah, that's my Shimon. <laughs> It's an uh, incredible performance by both teams. I can't express it enough. It, it's great for the area to have rivalries like that. It just it just elevates uh, the exposure for this region when you hear, well, okay, what type of teams up there play it? Have you heard of Quimmins Cannon? What, oh, yeah, I heard about that match. Because uh, both student sections are there and into it. Uh, young and old people are there. It, it fills up each place. You're going to bring like a makeshift boat out <laughs> with a Quimmins mask and, and – have the girls run out with that and, and, and the student section dressed up in different characters. I, I said on, on Twitter, we need to do a where are they now, like former turn up section members. So anyway, great for women's cam. They play each other again in October in Hertford and you better believe it's, it, it will be L I T lit. Uh, really great to see that. Now we will close up shop because this has been power packed, fun, exciting, entertaining, the yes. whole thing. We've been on a roll. I needed the butter. That's it. <sighs> Always follow us on Twitter, though. NENC Sports. I'm an Owen OBX, Malcolm. And Malcolm underscore Shields. That's for the latest sports updates. And pick up a copy of the Daily Advance newspaper. Almost always go beyond our radio time. So check NENCSports.podomatic.com for a podcast version of the show that has it all. From Owen Hassel, Malcolm Shields, Clay Mercer, Randy Jones, Ernest Wilson. And so many who help make this show possible. It's the NENC. And don't you see, athletes, athletes live here. NENC Sports Radio Show is produced at the WRVS FM studios on the campus of Elizabeth City State University. 